Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Amazon Fire TV Cube. This is the latest TV box from Amazon that was rumored for a while, and a lot of folks were excited when they heard about this because they thought maybe this one would be more powerful than the Fire TV 3 we got at the end of 2017. It is not. It is the same guts as the Fire TV 3, but they added some additional functionality to basically give you an Echo Dot that is uh, able to work like other Amazon Echo devices when the TV is off. So for example, I can ask it, what time is it? It's 1.31 p.m. So I've got that functionality here when the television is off, there's a speaker built in, it's got the far field microphones, but otherwise it is the Amazon Fire TV 3 inside. So it's not a very powerful device, it's powerful enough to do all the video watching that you might want to do with it, but it is slower than last year's Amazon Fire TV 2. So if you're interested in how it works as a TV box, I'm gonna point you at that other video because it's the same functionality. This one does offer some cool functions related to the voice control that we're going to explore in this video. So we're going to be taking a look at all of those features here in just a minute. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before I uploaded it. So let's get to it now and see what this device is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is $120 as you see it. Uh, compare that to $79 on the Amazon Fire TV 3. What does the extra money get you in this one? Just the voice control. The processor, the RAM, and the GPU and everything are all the same. It's got the Amlogic S905Z. It's got the Mali 450 GPU, 2 gigs of RAM, and 16 gigabytes of storage. Again, it's not going to appeal to enthusiasts, and I talk about why it won't in my other review, and I definitely suggest you check that out if you want to look at Kodi and Plex performance. It really is not something I'm going to recommend to people that are uh, looking to drive a lot of high-end video. But if you're a consumer looking to just do some streaming services like Amazon and Netflix in 4K uh, with HDR and in some cases Atmos, this is going to be fine, but there are better, more powerful devices out there for people that need that horsepower. On the back here, we've got our power cable that goes in there. HDMI out is here. This is an infrared blaster right here, and it connects up to this little cube here on the other end of the cable. And one of the cool things about the voice control on this that you're paying extra for is that it will turn on all of your stuff when you issue it a command, which we're going to try out in a few minutes. And if you've got an older television, it will be able to communicate with that TV over the cube here with uh, remote commands. You can either use what's programmed into its database or uh, program your own remote into it. And I found it worked pretty well. I'll show you how it all came together in a little bit. Uh, for most TVs that have an HDMI port that were made probably in the last six or seven years or so, uh, it should be able to control everything through the HDMI port, but this is here for devices that you are using that don't have that support. Right here is a micro USB port, and what they give you in the box, which I thought was a great thing to include, uh, is an Ethernet adapter, and yes, I gotta get a new cable there. Uh, this is my preferred way to use TV boxes by connecting them directly to your Ethernet network. That's the best way uh, from a performance standpoint to use them. It also, though, supports wireless AC, so if you have a fast wireless network, it should work fine with that as well, but it was nice to see this, this little box in the box because it's usually an added cost uh, with the other Fire TV device. And that is it for connectivity. Again, uh, lacks a lot of the stuff that I know my enthusiast friends will want to see. On the top here, you've got the basic uh, echo dot commands. So we have the uh, mute button here, just in case you don't want it continually uh, answering to you when you issue the trigger word, your volume up and down for that internal speaker. And then you can push this button to uh, have it uh, listen for you without having to issue the trigger word. Uh, the speaker on this is enabled when your television is off. When the TV comes back on, the audio will flow through the television. So let me get this thing booted up now and you can see how all these voice commands work. So let's take a look first at a very simple voice search on here. And I do suggest if you have an Echo device to mute it now, I have to use the A word a few times here for demonstration purposes. So we're going to say, Alexa, show me some science fiction movies. And now it should pull up a list. Unfortunately, this search doesn't seem to be working too well because it's not giving me a lot of movies here. It's giving me a TV series here, another TV series there. Uh, but it is showing me stuff that's on Netflix in addition 
uh, to Amazon, which is something that we haven't always seen out of the universal search on these Amazon devices. But still, this is not uh, an accurate result, even though I do appreciate that it's giving me more than just Amazon as an option. If I go back to the main menu here and do a traditional universal search, science fiction movies, it's going to give me something a little more accurate, I think. Uh, let's hit that one there. And uh, there you've got actual science fiction movies as opposed to uh, a science fiction series. But most of these movies are living inside of Amazon store and not anywhere else. So search isn't so great on this, but there are some other things that I thought were really pretty cool. And one thing this device can do is turn on and control all of your devices with a single command. Uh, so what I did a little earlier was I configured it with my uh, 4K television over there along with my home theater receiver, and I did this. Alexa, play Star Trek The Next Generation. Here's Star Trek The Next Generation. And you can see after I asked it to play Star Trek The Next Generation, uh, it began turning on everything, finding Star Trek The Next Generation, in this case on uh, Amazon's ecosystem there in the Prime Video thing, and it started playing an episode for me with that single command, which I thought was pretty cool. You can ask it for what show you want to watch. It finds it and plays it. And it also appears smart enough to know where to look for stuff. So, for example, if I ask it, Alexa, play Voltron. And Voltron is something that's only on Netflix, so what it's going to do is load it up on Netflix. So if it's not on Amazon's video system, it's going to go somewhere else to find it here. And in this case, it was able to get it up on Netflix. So as more apps support this, I think this might be a really useful feature, especially if you got some old show that just popped to mind and you want to just watch it, uh, you can ask for it. And generally, those shows will come up and start playing for you, which I thought was a very useful feature. Now, the setup process for controlling your TV I found to be very simple. Uh, if you have a newer TV that supports the HDMI CEC protocol, the cube will detect what it is and should be able to do everything uh, with just a couple of clicks to get it all set up and working. And usually those clicks are just validating that uh, the commands are being issued properly. It took maybe two or three minutes tops to get that working. It also worked with my home theater receiver. Uh, so you saw in that example a few minutes ago, it was able to turn on the receiver and the television. And when I set up the receiver, it was able to not only turn it on, but also get it to select the proper input that uh, the Fire Cube here was on. So it was a very automated procedure, issued that one command to watch that show I wanted to watch, and everything just came up and started working. I found it worked most of the time, although there were a few issues where the receiver came on, but the television didn't turn on. And I had one instance where the TV turned off and the receiver was staying, staying on. So it wasn't perfect in its control, so there might be some tweaks they need to do along the way here, but generally uh, it was working as advertised. I was also impressed with how it worked with older televisions. I had an old uh, TV, an Orion TV that I bought probably on liquidation at some point along the way uh, that doesn't have that HDMI CEC feature. And I was able to control it via the infrared blaster that we looked at at the outset here. And that process was a little bit longer uh, because the IR commands that were in the database on the cube here didn't work with that television. So after it exhausted uh, itself after six different tries, it then said, take out the TV remote, and it trained it manually. So I pointed the remote uh, at the IR blaster here. I hit the power button. It detected what I pushed and then used that to turn off the television. Likewise, it was able to uh, learn the volume commands and the mute button from those button pushes as well, and then it was all working just fine. And that old television uh, was able to turn on and work very similar to how some of my more modern TVs did. So I think if you've got an older set, uh, there's a very good chance this will work with it uh, without any issue. So I think if you are attracted to this notion of asking for a show and having it just turn on everything and be ready to go, uh, you'll have it here. And you can also control some of the volume commands and mute it with your voice too. And there's a few other cool things you can do with this. So if you've got uh, music in your Amazon account, you can play the music back and get uh, the lyrics flowing by as well with a voice command. So that was kind of neat. I can also have it Show me the studio camera. And this is going to pull up my uh, D-Link camera that I've been playing with over the last couple of days. Some of these commands do take a while to issue here, as you can see. It's saying waiting for my D-Link to activate here, but uh, in a second or two, I'll be able to tune in to a uh, compatible security camera there. So that was kind of a neat thing, and you can 
uh, see James working away there on one of our other computers. And then I can also get the weather uh, by asking it, show me the weather. And in this case, I'll get a visual to what I would normally just get as an audio uh, command on the speaker thing. So if it was disconnected from the monitor, I would just hear it. Uh, but with the monitor on, you get a nice visual and the sound will pipe through the monitor, although right now I have it uh, muted for copyright safety purposes here on the channel. So in summation, I think this is a novelty and you're paying an extra $40 for that novelty, which is the voice command. It does work very well. It was turning on all my stuff and finding the show that I want to watch, but I'm not sure that's worth a $40 price premium over the Amazon Fire TV 3 that has the exact same guts as this one. And that is my biggest disappointment with this. It's a very low powered TV box for the price. And I was hoping, expecting perhaps something a little bit more, especially given that a lot of us who were fans of the Amazon Fire TV 2 were disappointed that the TV 3 was a step backwards in performance. Uh, this is kind of a sidestep with a bit of voice control bolted onto the top of it. Really nice product, well constructed and works well, but uh, Amazon just isn't doing it for me on these TV boxes lately. Not only do we have some of the performance issues that we talked about in the prior video, uh, but it's also not playing well with YouTube either. So if you have kids that like to watch YouTube, the experience on here is not good. They don't have an official YouTube app. You're using web browsers and web wrappers to uh, watch YouTube content, and it's really not a good experience right now. But if you live a lot in Netflix and on Amazon and you like the voice control, I suppose it's kind of fun to have that built in. But uh, again, you're going to be paying 120 bucks for that privilege, and you can get the same experience without the voice for 80 with the TV3. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast. Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.